parents. And we uh, bake, uh, once a month we would bake uh, lots and lots of uh, bread and sell it to the parents and other things. But you put in oil in bread and we would put in two cups of oil for 11 loaves of bread. And what that ends up uh, doing is it makes the bread more moist and it gives it a better texture. But oil doesn't grow on trees. Where does oil come from? There's a variety of different kinds of oil. You can have corn oil, you can have soybean oil, you can have vegetable oil. I mean, you can have all these different kinds. You can have olive oil. Do you know how, much, how many olives it takes to make one tablespoon of oil? 64. So that's a lot of olives that get processed and squeezed to get the oil out. And oil is a very high concentration of calories. In fact, it's probably the highest amount of calories per pound of any food at all. So we're going to go through and talk a little bit about nutrition related to nutrient density and calorie density. So nutrients would be things like minerals and vitamins and uh, fiber that are part and parcel of the food and then calories would be determined uh, by, you know, basically how much uh, carbohydrate and protein and fat are in the food. So the lowest group of calorie density food would be vegetables. And so if you ate a pound of vegetables, you would consume approximately 70 calories. Um, a pound of vegetables, depending on what vegetable it is, would be approximately two cups. The stomach of the average adult is four cups in size. Let's see if I can get this to show up. So this is my Nalgene water bottle and it's four cups. And that's the average size of the stomach. So when you, maybe I'll turn off my virtual background, it might be easier to see. Oh, there we go. That'll be easier to see. Okay, so, um, whoops, <laughs> my picture up. Sorry, give me one second. Oh, I've got to do something else here. So I guess I'll, I'll just go back to um, the virtual background. Um, so, oh, I'm so sorry. What did that do? Oh, there we go. Um, come on, it's playing games with me. My apologies. All right, so here is the quart Nalgene bottle. And this is about the size of your stomach. So if you put in two cups of vegetables, that would be about half the bottle full. That would be 70 calories of food. And if you were to eat, um, what kind of vegetables would you like to eat? You like? Not for me here. You like carrots? You like celery? Broccoli. Broccoli, do you like cauliflower? I don't have my hearing. Um, there are just so many different kinds of uh, vegetables you can eat and fill up with, and they are all extremely high concentration of nutrition, but very low concentration of calories. So if you filled your stomach up with, let's say you ate a potato, and let's say you ate a couple servings of vegetables, um, you would get, 
if you fill this thing full, you might get 400 calories uh, in of vegetables. Now, fruit is the next group of food we're going to consider. And fruit is approximately 160 or 170 calories per pound. So they are a little bit more than twice, well, about twice as calorie dense as um, vegetables. So if you were to fill up your stomach with four cups of fruit, uh, it would be about 350 to 400 calories. All right, so now we're going to go to bread. Uh, bread is processed, and each slice of bread is approximately 100 calories. Um, and the bread, how many, how many slices of bread could you put into a one quart jar? You know, let's say each one fills it up oh, no. <laughs> about one eighth of the way. My guess is you could probably get eight slices of bread pretty comfortably into a one quart jar. And guess how many calories that is? That's 800 calories. All right. If you were to fill this up with potatoes, potatoes are a whole food and are plant based. An average potato is approximately 100 to 125 calories. So if you were to fill this up with potatoes, you might be able to get four or maybe five potatoes in here. Could you eat five potatoes? Yes or no? Most people couldn't eat five potatoes at once. So if you were to eat, guess, guess how many calories there is in ice cream? Jillian. It's bad news, ladies and gentlemen. It's bad news. <laughs> ice cream is approximately 2,500 calories per pound compared with vegetables, which are 70 calories a pound. And have you ever eaten the whole quart of ice cream? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to confess. But I suspect that there's plenty of people who have eaten certainly a whole pint oh, yeah. and maybe even a whole quart of ice cream. And if you eat a whole quart of ice cream, that's probably you know, somewhere at two, 3,000 calories that you just consumed. And the highest concentration of calories in any food that we know of is in oil. Oil is 4,000 calories per pound. And so let me ask you something. When you're cooking, if there's any, let's say you're cooking meat, if there's any extra fat, what do you do with the extra fat? Do you pour it down the drain? No, you don't pour it down the drain. And the reason you don't, you don't pour it down the drain is because it plugs up the plumbing. And then you have to call the plumber and it's probably at least $100 to get them to come out. So, you know, you're going to be in, in deep. Well, guess what? Our body has plumbing as well. And if I eat a high calorie, high fat diet, um, it's going to take that fat and it has to put it somewhere. And eventually it's going to put it in my adipose tissue or the fat cells that we uh, develop, but it also tends to plug up the blood vessels. And so it makes my blood pressure go up higher. It makes it uh, more difficult for the blood to flow through the little capillaries. And if you know anybody uh, who has diabetes, of, uh, trees then like you know something it's, about it's, it's, that they have, uh, diabetics typically have poor blood circulation. And one of the reasons for that is because diabetes is very much connected to excessive fat in our diet and in our bodies. And the blood circulation can't work so well in those little tiny capillaries that are out at the extremities of our body. And so they have circulation issues. So, what we are encouraging you to consider 
and frankly inviting you to take steps in that direction, or maybe you just want to adopt it, is to go plant-based, which means to eat nothing that has a mother and nothing that has a face. So, unprocessed, low in fat, low in salt, low in sugar. Now, why is sugar bad for human beings? What does the dentist say? He says it's going to protect your teeth if you don't have, if you don't consume a lot of refined sugar. And once again, remember, we're going for unprocessed food. So sugar, refined sugar is highly processed. Um, so they've done studies on people's brains to see how sugar affects the brains. And there's a study that demonstrates the comparison between the effect of sugar on a brain and the effect of cocaine on a brain. And it stimulates neuro neurological activity. And the center of the brain that is affected by cocaine, when they put a neural net on somebody's head, then you can see how the different centers of the brain light up when there's brain activity in that area. And so in the pleasure center, the brain lit up brightly when the person was given uh, a dose of cocaine. And later they gave that same person sugar, a dose of sugar, and that pleasure center of the brain lit up even more from the sugar than it did from the cocaine, demonstrating that it's, it's addictive. And I think we all know that to be true, that it's a very sugar is a very addictive thing. So nutrition, we're encouraging people to adopt um, this plant-based life, uh, lifestyle. And how does it boost your immunity? Well, fruits and vegetables uh, have an abundance of micronutrients. Um, maybe you're taking multivitamins. And when you take multivitamins, you tend to get large dosages of the different vitamins in that multivitamin. We had a, a gentleman by the name of Dr. T. Colin Campbell, who is a nutri retired nutritional biochemist from uh, Cornell University, come and lecture at our church a couple times. And he said, somebody asked him the question, should I take uh, vitamin supplements? Are they good for me? And he said, well, they are good for one thing. They are good for separating you from your money. He said, they come in such high dosages that the body simply cannot handle that much of a dosage of the different multivitamins. And so he said, your body tends to pass them on through and they get eliminated. And he said, most, you're flushing most of your money down the toilet. But if you eat uh, plant-based food, it, the micronutrients come in very small dosages that the body can handle and absorb and it accomplishes what needs to be done. Uh, Plant-based nutrition, there's a high, uh, there are high antioxidant fruits and vegetables. So those ha high antioxidants boost our immune system and boost, boost our, our, our ability to fight them off. Berries, plums, and prunes are some of the high antioxidant fruits. And cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and spinach, cauliflower, and then kale and garlic are also very good. So if you will add more fruits and vegetables to your diet, it will help. UCLA did a study and they determined that if everybody in America was to eat one more serving of fruit or vegetables per day, it would result in a lowering of the national mortality by 10,000 people per year, just from eating one more serving of fruit and vegetables. And then somebody asked the question, well, what about organic? Should we go with organic? And uh, this was Dr. Esselstyn who was uh, explaining this study. 
I'm sorry, this was Dr. Michael Greger who was explaining this study. He said, well, yes, UCLA was able to factor in the organic component. And they found that if everybody in America ate one more serving of organic fruit and vegetables, it would result in a reduction of mortalities by 10,010. So it would be an additional 10 people who would live if we all ate organic. So his uh, remarks were, it helps, but it's not essential. All right, next let's go to exercise. And we're gonna have to scoot along if we're gonna get done by four. Okay, so when we talk about exercise, what do we mean? Well, um, you, getting your body moving, using your muscles, and getting your blood flowing a little bit more. So uh, some of the exercise, probably the best exercise that pretty much everybody can do is what? Walking. Obviously, you need to consult with your doctor before you make any changes in any of this. We are not offering you a prescriptive program. We are simply providing you with scientifically based information, and then you can figure out what you want to do with it. But when it comes to exercise, running uh, or walking, walking's the best, uh, but certainly running can be. Here are six exercises that we can do without any equipment. So the first one would be walking or running. The next one would be squats. Now, what is a squat? Well, it's where you stand up straight and then you bend at the knees and bend at the waist and go into a sitting position or a semi-sitting position and hold that for a couple seconds and then stand back up. So walking, squats, push-ups. All right, well, you might say, oh, I haven't done push-ups in many years. No problem. Get down on your hands and your knees and Extend your arms straight out. And if you can't go all the way down to the ground, just bend your arms a little ways and push back up. And if you do a couple push-ups to start with, just to get started, it will begin to build up your muscles and get your body uh, doing exercises. Crunches. So crunches would be when you lay on, your, on the ground on your back and you put your knees up and then you just Put your hands on your chest and curl forward just a little bit. And that's gonna begin exercising your, your core muscles, your stomach muscles. Um, lunges would be uh, an exercise that anybody could do uh, where you're simply stepping forward on one foot and bending at that knee and uh, coming back up. And then tricep dips. You Put your hands on the chair and then you slide your bottom forward so that your bottom is no longer on the chair but your hands are and you let yourself down a little bit and then push yourself up. So many scientific institutions including Harvard Health recommend that we do 150 minutes per week. And so you can break that up into uh, chunks if you want to. You could break it up into five 30-minute chunks. And if you haven't been walking and you start walking with your doctor's permission, um, you know, maybe you can start off with 10 minutes of walking and gradually you can build it up until you get to the point where, okay, so what, what's the benefit of having your, um, your, your exercise? Well, one of the things it does, it gets you breathing harder. And so that harder breathing means you have more air going into your body and out of your body. And that tends to help flush the bacteria out of your lungs and out of your airways. So that's good. It increases your circulation. So your, your body automatically raises the level of heartbeat according to what the needs of the the body it, it is, or what the needs are, and it, that gets those white blood cells circulating more rapidly through your body, 
and they are the immune fighters. And so they will find bacteria and they will find infections and they will attack them. Um, body exercise gets your body temperature to rise a little bit from the exertion. And that rise in body temperature helps to fight bacteria. When you exercise, it slows down the release of stress hormones. And that's a very good effect on your body. It helps you to feel better. Uh, it helps you to be more energetic. And how do you sleep at nighttime after you've had a good exercise? You know, you don't want to exercise late in the day, but if you've exercised earlier in the day, you're tired, and so you're going to sleep better at nighttime. I heard one lecturer say that for every hour of exercise that I do or that we do, his estimation was it adds the equivalent of one healthy day of life at the other end of the journey. So if that's true, that's a real uh, blessing. Exercise, um, working in your garden, don't overdo exercise, like running a marathon. Uh, overdoing the exercise tends to suppress uh, the, the immune system. And so that's kind of the basics of uh, exercise. Now let's shift to water. All right, how much water should we drink a day? Well, apparently there are a number of different ways of determining how much water people drink or should drink. There's one rule of thumb that says, take the amount of pounds that you weigh, so I weigh about 200 pounds, and divide it in half, so that number would be 100, and that's how many ounces of water we should drink per day. Well, in doing my research for this lecture, uh, I read a variety of scientific uh, journals and articles, and I found one from Harvard Health to be particularly insightful. And they said that their recommendation is that ladies should drink 11 and a half cups of water a day. And their recommendation for men was that they should drink 15 and a half cups of water a day. Well, going back to the court jar, uh, this is four cups, so that means ladies should drink three of these a day, and 15 and a half is just about four quarts, so that means men should drink four of these a day. And once again, I've heard scientists and physicians talk about this from a very sort of a simple, simplistic point of view. Uh, I heard one physician say that once a day, your urine should be clear. And then I've heard a PhD uh, scientist uh, researcher say that every time you go to the restroom, your urine should be clear. So I'm not going to try and pontificate as to which, you know, which of the two is right, but the body, okay, the kidneys filter the water for us. Anybody want to take a guess? I mean, Dr. Kyle is here with us. He would know. But anybody want to take a guess at how many uh, quarts of water our kidneys filter per day? This was a shocker to me. Actually, my best, my lifelong best friend, uh, I grew up as a missionary's kid in India. And uh, my best lifelong best friend, also a missionary's kid in India, is now a general uh, thoracic surgeon. And uh, he told me, what we, we were roommates in college for four years together. He told me one day, um, if we didn't have kidneys, he said, we would have to drag a 55-gallon barrel around with, all, uh, around with us all day long to provide our water needs. And I said, really? And he, that was the end of that discussion. Anyway, uh, in my preparation for this, I read that the kidneys filter between 120 quarts of liters up to 150 liters per day. The average human being urinates approximately two liters or two quarts a day. So that means if we didn't have kidneys that were recycling our water, 
we would have to drink somewhere between 30 and 40 gallons of water a day. Can you imagine that? So the more water we flush through our system, uh, the, the better. All right, water, it, it's good for, for hydration. Um, one physician summarizes it and says it this way, drinking a sip of water every 15 minutes will wash bacteria and viruses into your stomach where the stomach acid will destroy them. So water is such a very, very helpful thing. And there's so much more to talk about uh, that we won't uh, have the time to do that right now. Next, we're going to, so that's the W for the, that's, so we've covered nutrition, exercise, water. Now we're going to the benefits of sun exposure, sunshine. That's the S for uh, new start. All right, so just kind of briefly summarizing some of the benefits of uh, sunlight, sun exposure. Sun exposure lowers the blood pressure because when sunlight touches the skin, it causes the blood vessels to release nitric oxide and that causes the blood vessels to relax and widen. And when our blood vessels relax and widen, then that helps to lower our blood pressure. Um, sun exposure improves bone health. So how does that work? Well, vitamin D is produced when sunlight comes in contact with our skin. And we need somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes of sunlight exposure per day. And so I don't know how you want to go about doing that. Maybe if you're outside walking, you'll naturally pick up the sunlight. Or if you're working in your garden, uh, I know some people have said to me, John, I put on a bathing suit and I go lay out in the backyard and I lay on my tummy for seven minutes and then I flip over onto my back for seven minutes. And this is a shocker to me. 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes of direct sunlight exposure produce, helps our body to produce 10,000 international units of vitamin D. 10 thousand. And so I got to thinking about this. What if I don't need 10,000 international units of vitamin D? Well, the body will mitigate that. And if we need less than that, it will sense when the, the need has been met and it, it will stop, uh, stop, stop doing that. So how does, vitamin D, how does vitamin D factor into bone health? Well, vitamin D stimulates the absorption of bone strengthening calcium and phosphorus in the body. And there's a direct correlation between bone density and vitamin D3, which is formed during the manufacture of vitamin D when the sunlight hits our skin. Uh, higher levels of vitamin D lowers the risk of all types of fractures. Uh, Susan, my wife works as a dietitian in the transitional care unit for Little Company of Mary Hospital here in Torrance. And she says, John, we deal with people who have broken hips and are, have had surgery and are at the TC, TCC, Transitional Care Center, uh, recovering. And she says, one of the questions that she always ponders in her mind is, why did somebody break their hip? Did they stumble and fall and break their hip upon impact? Or were their bones so weak that their hip fractured oh. when they were standing? And <laughs> that you know caused, have connections? And that caused them to fall. So sun exposure is just tremendously beneficial for, um, uh, for our bodies. Uh, Sunlight is antimicrobial, and there's evidence that it can kill the flu virus. Um, sunlight on your skin not only produces vitamin D, but it boosts your immune immunity and your mood. Uh, so spending time out in nature, walking, gardening, whatever, uh, helps you get that sunlight, and it also results in better rest at nighttime, um, and fresh air certainly helps that as well.
So that's the S for sunlight. Next, we're going to go to air. So we're looking at the word start, S, oh, sorry, T, temperance. I apologize, I almost skipped that. Uh, so temperance, what is temperance? Well, temperance is practicing uh, the abstinence of things that are bad for me and the uh, balance of the things that are good for me. So habits like alcohol, what classification, what drug family does alcohol fit into? It fits into the classification of a neurotoxin. So what, is, what does the word toxin mean? Uh, it, it's something bad for us, it's a poison. And so alcohol, the right amount of alcohol for consumption for life today is really zero. And there's pretty much unanimous agreement between scientists and doctors about this. Um, smoking is, once again, commonly known and understood to be terrible for health and its results. Uh, caffeine is a, is a chemical that is a stimulant, and um, that's just pretty much a part of uh, life today, right? Everybody's drinking coffee or decaffeinated coffee, but it's an artificial stimulant to your system, and uh, it takes a toll on your overall system. It helps to suppress your immune system. Um, Something else that we need to talk about today, just briefly, when we're talking about uh, temperance, uh, would be things like our addiction to the news and our addiction to our computers and our addiction to our cell phones. Uh, I read a study that said that the average person in America touches their cell phone 2,500 times a day. Well, I don't know, where do you carry your cell phone? Do you carry it in your purse or in your hand? Um, I see uh, lots of uh, people who will carry it in their back pocket. And my guess is that they're probably reaching back there to make sure it's still there all the time. Um, well, it's, it's, I don't believe it's questioned by anybody that um, people today, particularly teenagers and young adults, uh, you might say, are addicted to their cell phones. And so I think putting your cell phone down, we live next door to a park in El Segundo here. And it's so interesting. Parents will bring their kids and drop them off at the park and get them playing on the slides or swings or whatever. And then they'll go sit on their bench over on the picnic bench and do what? <laughs> they'll spend the rest of the hour just doing this, tap, 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 tap. tap sometimes oblivious to their kids. Uh, so temperance would be avoiding those things which are bad for us and um, managing carefully those things that are good for us. Uh, next, that's the temperance, the T for new start. Uh, let's go to the A, which is air. All right, um, air is composed of nitrogen, oxygen, and then some other gases that are about Nitrogen is somewhere around 78, 79%. Oxygen is around 20 or 21%. And then other gases fit into the like 1%. How many times does a person breathe at rest? It's somewhere between 15 and 25. Uh, we breathe, be, breathe faster when we're exercising. Babies breathe approximately 40 times a minute. So the air that we breathe in has 21% oxygen, and the air that we breathe out has 15% oxygen. So when the air is in our lungs, um, we consume somewhere between five and 6% uh, of the oxygen that's there. And the thing that triggers us to exhale is the buildup of carbon dioxide in our system. All right, so the benefits of fresh air. Well, it helps improve your blood pressure and your heart rate. Because if you're getting plenty of oxygen, 
and you have lots of oxygen exchange in the small little alveoli sacs of your uh, lungs, um, then your heart doesn't have to beat so, f so fast. If you're not getting a lot of oxygen and not getting sufficient exchange in your lungs, then your heart has to work harder because there's not as much oxygen available to the blood in your, um, in your lungs, all right? Fresh air strengthens your immune system. How would that happen? Well, researchers tell us that fresh air is a natural disinfectant. Fresh air can kill flu viruses and other harmful germs. Germs can circulate inside buildings. So on days when you can't get outside, be sure to refresh the air by doing what? Open those windows up. Get fresh air in and get fresh air moving. So, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's brutal to have to try and get through all eight of these uh, topics in our uh, one hour uh, lecture time, but fresh air is such an essential component to sleeping well at, at nighttime. Um, the next area that we're going to look at in our presentation is the R. So we've done N for nutrition, E for exercise, W for water, S for sunshine, T for temperance, A for air. Now we're going to look at R, rest. All right. Uh, sleep deprivation decreases the number of natural killer cells, our T cells. Getting a good night's sleep boosts the immune system by enhancing the T cell production in our body, uh, which adheres to and destroys cells infected by pathogens and viruses. Sleep renews and heals worn down body systems. I mean, how do you feel after a good night's sleep? Yeah? Good. Thumbs up. And how do you feel after a short night's sleep? Well, <laughs> I, I had a short night's sleep. Since churches are closed, we have to broadcast our services uh, in a live stream format or on Zoom or in some other way. And so I work with the director of our media and tech services of the church to put, put out everything. Um, and we usually finalize everything on Friday night. And it's our goal to get done by nine or 10 o'clock and go home and get a good night's sleep. And so our, our tech director is a gentleman by the name of Paul. And last night he, he got halfway through the, the live streaming and the archiving and the uh, TriCaster machine that we use to, to do, the, do that started giving us a message saying, you don't have adequate bandwidth. Well, guess what everybody's doing on Friday night? They're staying home and they're surfing the internet or they're watching their favorite movies and we're supposed to have a, a pretty wide band, bandwidth, but boy, it was, it was really running slow last night. So. I got to bed about one o'clock last night. And when I woke up this morning, I was like, oh boy, I don't feel so hot. Um, but I went through all of the other seven um, natural healing things and it helped to get me energized and uh, boosted back up. Sleep, uh, sleep renews and heals worn down body systems. Sleep aids in the natural melatonin production, which enhances immune response. Um, seven to eight hours of sleep are approximately the best. In our Beach Cities community, we have a husband and wife team of neurologists, Dr. Dean Shirzai and Dr. Aisha Shirzai. And they both were born and grew up in their early years in Afghanistan. Um, I can speak one of the languages of India called Hindustani and 
Dr. Aisha Shirzai, she can speak Hindustani as well. So we've become very good friends and they've lectured in our community health classes and we've helped them in some of their programs. And um, they've written a book called The Alzheimer's Solution. And it's, been a, it's become a New, York best, a New York Times bestseller book um, and they have five steps for people to follow. And on the basis of the research that they do at the Alzheimer Research Lab in Loma Linda that they run, uh, they say we can prevent 90% of Alzheimer's. And they talk about the tidal wave of Alzheimer's that has hit America and not just America, but the world today. And they say that 90% of that is preventable. And one of the components, it, the, the word that they use to hi highlight and outline their program is called neuro. And N stands for nutrition. E stands for exercise. U stands for unwind. And just a simple summary of that is get rid of the chronic stress that you have. So the things that you can do something about and quit worrying about them, get rid of them. Uh, R stands for rest. And in their lectures, I've heard them lecture a number of times, they say that their research has shown that people who sleep less than seven hours of sleep are contributing to a direct impact uh, that will negatively affect the body and help to facilitate Alzheimer's. And they said on the other end of the sleep spectrum, if you get nine hours or more, they say that that's too much sleep and that that also has a negative impact on the brain in relationship to the development of Alzheimer's. So seven to eight hours seems to be the very commonly accepted uh, number of hours of sleep that adults, generally speaking, need to get, according to the research that I have seen and read. The last uh, component of this, the eight natural healing remedies is T, which stands for trust, or trust in God. And so this is a very interesting aspect of uh, life and research, because it's clearly demonstrated uh, in scientific research and journals that trust, placing your trust in God or placing your trust in a higher power uh, translates into less reactivity, greater feelings of well-being, and ultimately even a decrease of the fear of death. Um, prayer and spirituality are very much components of trust. And so once again, they've re done scientific research and found that prayer and spirituality are linked to better health. Uh, prayer and spirituality or, or trust are linked to less hypertension. Okay, what is hypertension? Simply put, wouldn't you say hypertension is high blood pressure? And so we tend to worry. What are things that people worry about today? Well, pretty much any area of life we can get worrying about. And with trust and with prayer and with spirituality, the ability to place those worries and those cares into the hands of someone supernatural who loves you and who will care for you and help you, who will manage those things that seem unmanageable, is definitely going to help you relax. Have you ever participated in a trust fall? A trust fall is where a group of six or eight people uh, gather three facing three and three facing each other or four and four people facing each other and they put their arms out and you stand on a table 
with your back towards these people that are standing on the ground with their arms out, and you cross your hands over your chest, and you stand stiff as a board, and you fall back into their arms. And what do they do? They catch you. And that feeling of just letting go of it and knowing you have confidence in the people who are going to catch you, that is such a relief. And uh, prayer and spirituality and trust uh, result in less stress in our lives, even in difficult times. Uh, there's more positive feelings associated with trust and with prayer and spirituality. There's less depression. And there is a superior ability to handle stress. And so putting your faith in God not only gives you spiritual and mental peace, but science is showing its effects on physical healing and disease in lowering of cortisol levels and increasing the white blood cell counts. So trust that God will give us the resources we need, not only for our own use, but also to share with and bless others. There's this incredibly wonderful verse from the scripture that says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And so that's a brief survey of these eight natural healing remedies, new start. So let's review them. N stands for nutrition. E stands for exercise, 150 minutes a week. W stands for water. Drink three or four quarts a day. S stands for sunshine. And how much should we be out in the sun? About 15 minutes a day. T stands for temperance. So that means completely avoiding the things that are bad for us and balancing the other things that are good for us, managing them well. A stands for air. Get out, get exercising, get exerting yourself, and that good air will fill your lungs and oxygenate your blood and increase your immunity. R stands for rest. Get how many hours of sleep? Let's see if I can do this right. Seven to eight. Seven to eight hours of sleep. And the last one is T, trust, which is put your trust in God. And if you're facing some difficult things, ask him to take them and help you. It will lower your blood pressure. You'll live happier. You'll live longer. Thank you so very much for uh, listening to this lecture. And uh, I hope that you will put these things into practice. Look, this is a journey. So what we say to people when they come to our, uh, our health classes is Susan will always ask them, how many of you eat meat? And so the people will raise their hands. How many of you uh, are vegetarian? They'll raise their hands. How many of you are vegan? They'll raise their hands. And we say to people, if you're going to go home tonight or tomorrow and you're going to have a steak, we're asking you to take one small baby step. Put a piece of spinach on top of that steak and eat the spinach with your steak. <laughs> and so we want to encourage you to take baby steps that are uh, manageable and sustainable in the direction of better health. So thank you very much. You've been a great audience, and this is what I think about you. All right, now we're going to transition into the kitchen, and Susan's going to give the cooking demonstration. So give us just a minute to do that transition, please. Uh, yeah, I told him.
transitioning. So you need, to, you need to hear this. Do you want to see this? Sure. Okay. So you need to hear this. See that. And then I'll get the camera up. And Um, can uh, I call you back later? Yeah, I just have been listening to the class. It's been so oh, good. Great. I'm not it's, home right now. Okay, so well, it is it, it is yeah. so fantastic. I'll talk to you later. Oh, okay, I gotta go. Okay. okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye. Okay, uh, Greg. Uh, oh, yeah, we got to figure out how to share the recipes. Can you guys give us a suggestion of how we can, uh, let's see, join with video. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, what's going to be the best way for us to get these recipes to you? What was your question? How can we get the recipes to everybody? <clears throat> Do you have a slide somewhere or, or if you show it, you can send it to us and we can put it on the uh, participant screen. You can also, PDF, you can also, you can also add them to the chat and people oh, can download no, 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 it as they like. Yeah, you put it in. Susan says maybe she can put the recipe up on her screen and join the meeting. Uh, and you can take but that doesn't get Four of them. Okay, Adiel, Namak, Atta. Okay, she put it on the chat, on the what? chat screen. Put it, put it in the chat room. Okay, that, that's a good, good idea. Um, uh, so the means. If you have a PDF, you can uh, uh, add them to the chat as a file. It says there's a little place where you can do click oh, file, the file and chat. upload the the document, and then anybody can download it from there. To oh, their gotcha. Devices Perfect. or computers. Okay, thank you very much. Susan, uh, uh, share it with me. Better airdrop. Okay. Thank you for your patience. All right, let's see if we can get there. Is it one, one recipe or two? Two recipes. Two recipes. Okay, so let's see. Can I do more than one uh, recipe, one file at a time? Can I do more than one? Let's yes, see if I can you can put up a second one. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help with that. Okay, so there are there are two files up there, and now I'm going to get my phone going here and see if we can make this all work. It's supposed to. Okay. Um, let's see. One of these pages has can you uh, can anybody see let's see John Jensen where would I where's my second so you should be seeing uh, a countertop and some food there we go so can you make this one um, 
It says John Jensen. Can you, let's see. Can you, do you see a second one that says John Jensen with some food on the counter? In on my computer, it's on page two. I just need to hear that. Okay, um, let's see, how can we make this speaker view? Let's see if we'll get it. Got it. There we go. There, can you see that now? Okay, so here's my beautiful wife, Susan. And uh, you're on, Susan. Oh, ready. Okay, so you should have the two recipes that have been um, on the chat box. And I'm going to start off with the peanut butter chickpea cookies. Please give us a thumbs up if you can hear Susan's audio. Okay, you can hear it. All right, good. Okay, so you guys are good. Okay, so let's make the peanut butter chickpea cookies. And actually, to begin with, um, I eat these cookies for breakfast. I'm not a real big breakfast person, um, but these cookies are jam-packed with nutrition, and they're really easy to make. You can put them in the freezer and take out a few for breakfast or whatever, um, and they're really healthy. So if you all have the recipe, you can follow along with me. So I've got here the one can of the chickpeas that's been rinsed and drained. And it's nice because you can just throw everything into the, the, the mixer. Um, two very ripe bananas. And I'm going to show you um, when I mean real ripe. These here are good, but they're not going to be as sweet as these because these are a lot riper. So it says two large bananas. How do you tell the difference between ripe and not ripe bananas? Well, the more brown speckles they have on them, the better, the sweeter they'll be. But my personal taste is don't get the uh, brown speckles too much because then they start kind of turning kind of a weird banana flavor. So um, these here, we're gonna use these. And it says two large bananas. The thing about this recipe is you don't have to be so precise. Um, so I think I'm gonna put two and a half of these bananas in there because then they don't seem to be that big. So we'll put that in there, kind of break it up a little bit. Susan, can I make a suggestion? Sure. I think you're facing his phone, but we're seeing you through the laptop. We don't know oh, you are. Oh, yeah, no. and we don't have a recipe. We don't know where the recipe is. So, if okay, you're looking, so no, we're actually, looking at no. you through the we're looking at you through the laptop. Aside. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna turn that one off so that uh, so that you'll see the other one. Yeah, turn off the laptop. It's so off. The the mic on the phone will act up and put it on the main screen. Okay. So, is it working now? No, I don't see. All I see is a photo of you and John. Right. Okay, find, keep looking, keep looking through the. There are different pages of the uh, participants, and you need to scroll across until you come to another one that says John Jensen, and you'll see the picture of. Wow, our I, see, I see it. I see it. And then, if you are looking for the recipe, go to the chat box, yeah. and you should be able to see in the chat box where the um, recipes are loaded. Let's just check that out. I'm in the chat box, I don't see it. That's what I'm not so clear on either. Okay, did they disappear? No, oh, no, no, you scroll, scroll up a little bit on the chat box and you'll see two files, edamame, corn and jicama and peanut butter chickpea cookie. I don't see it, how far up? Yeah. Pastor Jensen. Slowly Pastor Jensen. Slow. Yes. There, they were sent just to me because I messaged oh. you 
mute everyone. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. It's a private chat. Can I change that to everybody? Yeah, please do. How do I do that? At the bottom, just click the where it says everyone or private. There's an arrow. See it? But how do I change? How do I move the recipe to go to everybody? Huh? Okay. You need to resend it to everyone. You need to reattach okay, it to everybody. Okay. All right. Sure all right. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Hang on. We'll we'll get this back to you here. Um, my apologies. All right. I apologize. We'll get we'll get you all set up. I still just see a photo. Right. There's the two of you. There's one. On your screen, it's just the two of you. Yeah. Lovely picture, but we're not seeing what you're doing there. <laughs> you need to find another screen. There's another John Jensen on there. I don't see. Yep. It. Turn turn off There's the mic on There's the uh, laptop and turn on the mic on the phone, and then that will make the phone the main screen. Oh, we'll turn it off on the laptop. Should I mute it on the laptop for them? And turn it on on the phone. Does that help you? Um, so now we can't hear anybody. <laughs> I see. Yeah, you. I I got the recipes. Thank you very much, and I could see you through the phone. I didn't get the recipes. I see Susan, but I'd like to make her the main screen. She's one of. She's on the same size as everybody else is. If you go to their screen up at the top, there's a little tiny blue box with three dots. You can pin the video and that's the only one that'll show on your main screen. That way other people won't bounce in ah, and out. Got it, thank you so much. Uh -huh. How do we get the recipes? Uh, recipes, little chat. How do we copy the recipes and to, to save them? Uh, you, you click on the, um, on the file on the chat room and then it'll, it'll allow you to download it to your computer. So click on it and then get out of Zoom or? No, yeah, you, you don't get out of Zoom. It just, um, no. just download. It won't take you out of Zoom. But I, I went to her I went to her picture on the top and there is three dots on the right and you click on it and now you can see her. You can see her in her kitchen there. So right. And if you if you hit pin video, it'll just right. it'll right. it'll lock that one in. Hmm. I hope it gets saved. Thank you. Okay, now keep talking. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to keep going on the recipe. That's okay. Hopefully, everybody's on board with that. All right, so what we have here in the food processor are the chickpeas and the bananas. And like I said, this is really a nice recipe because you can just throw everything into the food processor. And um, we've got here, let's see, next is the peanut butter. So we, I just am using smooth, natural peanut butter. I think it's the Costco Kirk, Kirkland brand. Um, love peanut butter. If you're allergic to peanuts, you can use, um, well, sun, sunflower butter. Those are seeds. So if you're allergic to nuts, you can use sunflower butter. Some oats, put the oats in there, three fourths cups of oats. Um, I'm leaving out the maple syrup or the date syrup. Um, my taste buds have learned to appreciate just the natural sweetener. If your taste buds aren't used to that yet, add a little maple syrup to it that will help to kind of brighten the sweetness if you want to. But the bananas are sweet enough. I don't feel like it needs any, for me it doesn't need any extra sweetener, but the couple of tablespoons is fine. So we'll put in some vanilla, flavor it up a little bit. I'm gonna put the baking powder in first. So one teaspoon of baking powder. 
That way I don't have to wash two teaspoons. Measure the dry first and then measure the liquid, and then you don't have to. Okay. So we pretty much got everything in there, and you're just gonna process it until it's smooth. Okay, you don't have to have it perfectly smooth. It's nice to have a little bit of chunk, chunk in there. Um, then I'm gonna put my favorite add-ins is um, these Enjoy Life mini chips. If you're gonna eat chocolate, chocolate chips, these are the, the best, because you will see that the only ingredients are Premium chocolate, what does it say there? Okay, let's go over here. We'll really look at the ingredients here. So it's got cane sugar, unsweetened chocolate, and cocoa butter, three ingredients. That's pretty, pretty natural. And I love chocolate, and this is one of the, the ways to, for me to eat some chocolate in a healthy cookie. So I'm just gonna put in about a quarter cup of the chocolate chips and I keep a container of chopped walnuts in my fridge and for making cookies, I'll put a quarter cup of, of that in there. And then we'll just um, pulse it real quick here to mix it up a little bit. Okay, there we have our cookie dough. You can see the texture of that. It's pretty much like regular cookie dough, and it doesn't have any sugar except for the chocolate chips and uh, peanut butter instead of butter and oil, and that's a pretty much a whole food. So this is a really healthy cookie recipe. I'm going to, the oven is on, so we're gonna bake them. I wish you could be here so you could try them. They're really good. So I like to use a scoop. This just makes the cookies more uniform, and I like to use a small scoop because they make the cookies bite size. Um, so we'll put them on the tray with a with a silk hat, non-stick tray. You can use parchment paper. Um, so we'll just do, and you, it makes the cookie size more even. And these are really, really good. And my your bowl, big bowl of fruit in the morning. So in these cookies, you got your oats, you got your peanut butter, you got your bananas, you got, um, what else did we put in there? Chocolate chickpeas. Yeah, so if, one thing about a plant-based diet that I really like to encourage is fiber. And in this recipe, the fiber comes from the oats, the chickpeas, and the banana. So this is a really good source of fiber too, not only, and it has good carbs in it and it has good protein in it and it will sustain you. So this is an easy way to get breakfast to hopefully to sustain you until lunchtime. I'm gonna just put these in the oven real quick. Set the timer for 18 minutes. Okay, there you got the Chickpea cookies. Anybody have any questions or, is, or can we not ask questions, answer questions? Any questions about that recipe? Can you, can you, I have a question. I have a question. Sure. Where yes. do you get that large uh, container of vanilla? Oh, this is um, Costco. Oh, yeah? Yeah, this is from oh. Costco. Okay. Oh, okay. So, this one does have alcohol in it. Um, some people are against that. So Trader Joe's has a non-alcohol vanilla, if if you'd like to to do that. Yeah, Smart Final. Smart Final has a non-alcohol vanilla. No, they have no. Oh, they have vanilla. Can you replace? Can you replace the almond? I mean, the peanut butter with almond butter. Yes, you definitely can. That would be a good replacement. I have a question. Did you put in the cooked steel cut oats? No, I put in rolled oats. Oh, okay. Yeah, rolled oats is probably better than steel cut because they're, they are not as 
whole, you know, they'll bake better, they'll mm -hmm. absorb the, the liquid better, it'll be better in a cookie. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think the steel cut might be good if you soak them first. Mm. One more quick can, question. Can, can you have the quantities of each thing you put in for those of us that didn't get the recipe in camp? Like, oh, I, the I know. Yeah, I know it's two bananas. Yeah. But okay, yeah, it's two large. One can of chickpeas, like a 15 ounce can of chickpeas rinsed and okay. drained. Got it. And then mm -hmm. two bananas. Got it. And then half cup of natural peanut butter. Okay. And I use the smooth, you could use chunky right. if you like more chunks. Mm -hmm. A teaspoon of baking powder. Teaspoon, okay. And then three fourths cups of the oats. Got it. One teaspoon vanilla. Okay, one teaspoon. Okay, thank you. And then you just put it on the food processor, process it, and you yep. can add in if you don't want chocolate chips, you can add in raisins or craisins and some nuts. Yeah. No. Coconut. I mean, it's a no. very versatile. I just, when you were doing it, I just Googled where I could buy those chocolate chips. I got them on Amazon, two big bags for $8. I didn't know yes, why. That, and actually, that's a good price because Sprouts sells these, and, and I think they're like five dollars a bag. Yeah, well, you get two, mm -hmm. and it's on Prime, so if you have Prime, it's free shipping. Great to know. Yeah, yeah, these are good. They they have different varieties. I like the mini because I make the cookies small, um, yeah. but they have a dark chocolate one. They have a lot. You know, it's a little bit more pricey than the average bag of chocolate chips. But okay. for some reason, I just feel better about eating these because they're, they're more whole, right? So I'm going to eat chocolate. So I'm going to eat the, the healthiest chocolate I can. I like the no, non-sugar. There's no sugar. Could you put blueberries in them? Did you can put say the dried blueberries in there. Dried blueberries. The other ones might yeah. be moist, the fresh ones. Yeah, the whole blueberries might give too much liquid off. Because uh -huh. I think unless you put more, if you thicken up the batter, you could put more um, fresh blueberries in there. Thickening with more oats, or what do you think? Yeah, more oats. Yeah, just put a little bit more oats in there, and then you can put fresh blueberries in there. I think that would work. So. Great, thank you. I have okay, a question. Gonna... I have sure. a question. Can you make that gluten-free recipe by just substituting the, you know, gluten-free flour or oats, that kind of stuff? Well, this, yes, this recipe is actually gluten-free if you use gluten-free oats. Oh, okay. Yeah. And remember, if you are gluten-free, you have to buy the certified gluten-free oats. Yes. Okay. okay. We, if you would like, we will post the recipes from today's uh, event on the gethealthy.la website. And so if you couldn't find them for the download uh, on the Zoom call, why we will post them up for you after, the, uh, after we're done uh, on the gethealthy.la. Okay, great. Okay, all right, let's go to our salad. And it's the edamame corn salad. And salads are really a great way to eat plant-based because you can eat a lot of whole, whole foods, whole vegetables. And I like salads that are, have a lot of substance to them. I mean, I like the leafy greens and all that, but for some reason, these salads that have a lot of substance, you know, the corn and the edamame and the jicama, they, they, they actually last longer in the fridge too, so you can eat them for a few days. All right, so I'm just gonna pull out all the ingredients here. I've already done some chopping. Um, you all know what jicama is, right? Right. This is part of the jicama. I, I got this at the 99 cent store, believe it or wow. not. Yeah. It's, and they have good jicama. I get that, get that there a lot. Okay, so we got the corn and the edamame bags. Let's look at the recipe. Does everybody have access to the recipe? Hopefully. Yes. All right, so it says a 12 ounce bag of green beans and a 12 or 16 ounce package of frozen corn. All right, so. I didn't really pay attention. This is a 12 ounce bag of the edamame and, and it's been thawing. Just throw that in there. And this is a 16 ounce bag of corn. 
that's been thawing. Throw that in there. Um, have you guys ever had jicama with lime juice and that tahini? It's really good. It's good for my apple. Okay, so let's see. What else does it call for? One cup of diced jicama. And the thing about this recipe, you don't really have to measure. I mean, if you like to measure, that's fine. But I'm measuring for your sake. But normally, I just kind of guesstimate. So the jicama is a root vegetable. And it's got lots of vitamins in it, believe it or not, even though it's white. And I grew up overseas. And in Thailand, in India, I think it was Thailand. But anyways, um, they called it ice potato. And if you think about it, it really is. It kind of looks like a potato, but it's more crunchy and more refreshing, and you can eat it raw, right? Because regular potatoes, you don't really want to eat raw. So you can dice them up. And I always say the smaller you dice things, the more flavor you get in one bite. Um, that's, that's always uh, important to have that flavor. Especially when you're plant-based and you want to encourage other people to go plant-based, it's really important to um, have things that taste really good. And you don't need a lot of salt to make that happen. Salt does help to bring out the flavor. And John McDougall says, cook without salt and then add salt at the table. Just sprinkle a little bit on your food and that helps to bring out the flavor. Since I like a lot of edema, um, jicama, and jicama's got a lot of fiber. I was checking it out. I don't know the exact grams, but um, and fiber is so important. And that's one thing about a plant-based diet. You get a lot of fiber because you're going to be eating a lot of vegetables. And as you can see, this salad is really already filling up the bowl. And I also encourage when you're eating plant-based to have a lot of color. Color is really appeals to the eye. So we've got yellow, green, white, we're adding some red, um, some more green, some celery. What was the red? The red was some bell, red bell pepper, chopped up, and some green onion for flavor. Now I'm not using the white part, it's a little bit too strong for me, but if you want a more strong onion flavor, you can use the white part. I just saved it for um, cooking later. And if you want to add more red, if you want to add some purple, you could dice up some purple cabbage in here. Um, I would avoid using vegetables that wilt easily, like leafy greens. But um, a cabbage, like a purple cabbage, is pretty, pretty sturdy, because then it will last longer in the fridge. It won't wilt as much. OK, so now we're going to make both. Oh, and so on the recipe, I think it says you can use parsley or cilantro or basil, but it's, it's nice to have some kind of herb in there. And I like cilantro, so this is cilantro. I'm just gonna gather in a bunch here and cut it up. Basil will go, would go really nice with this. So if you're growing any herbs in your garden this summer, that's a good place to use your herbs and salads. Okay, put that in there. And it's more than a tablespoon, like the recipe calls for a tablespoon, but that's okay. All right, on to the dressing. Let's see here. So the dressing calls for lemon juice, maple syrup, salt, garlic powder, and sweet basil. So a really good a salad dressing is just a mix of lemon juice and um, some kind of sweetener and I'm using maple syrup. That's a really good salad dressing. I don't know if you guys have tried that, but like if you're eating kale, a kale salad, that really complements the kale in the salad. We make a kale salad with oranges and quinoa and almonds in it and with this dressing, it's really good. And it's just seasoned with some basil and garlic. Let's see. So we need about five tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. So I've already squeezed some 
of the lemon. And I just put the strainer here because in case any seeds get loose, I don't want them going into the, the lemon juice. So five tablespoons is a little bit more than a quarter cup. Oh, I've got a tablespoon here. So we'll just do five tablespoons. One, two, this is three. A little more than three. <laughs> we'll use this last half here and call it five. And you know, fresh lemon juice, there's nothing like fresh lemon juice. It's a lot more work, but you can get bottled lemon juice that is basically just fresh, um, nothing added to it, nothing changed. And that's, that's fine too, but I always say fresh is best. So we've got the lemon juice, and we'll do a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup. All right, there you go. I've already pre-measured out the basil and the garlic powder and a little bit of salt. Put that in there. Mix it around a little bit. And add it to the salad. Anybody have any questions about this or plant-based diet? Um, I just want to say if you're starting out and you're thinking about going plant-based, I think the first step for you would be to eliminate dairy. Uh, um, that is probably the biggest culprit. Um, culprit of what? Of diseases. You know, people with arthritis, people with intestinal problems, people you know, who have allergies. I think avoiding dairy is really a good place to start. I've known people that have had arthritis and they go off dairy and arthritis um, goes away. Um, and dairy, you know, I, and when I first became vegan plant-based, I did it because of health reasons. And I learned about the animals, you know, the compassion for animals. I learned about all the ethical reasons. I learned a lot about going plant-based and it's really kind of fun to learn all that, especially in this pandemic now, because where they're attributing um, a lot of these viruses that come from animals. So if we avoid animal products, we're really doing ourselves a big favor by reducing our susceptibility to these viruses. So going plant-based is, is really an awesome thing to do right now. Um, but I, I read somewhere that, this, this really struck me, but I read somewhere that when they take the calves away from the mamas because they want the milk from the mom, the, mo the mama cow actually cries for her baby when they take the baby away. And I was like, Whoa, that's, that's too much for me. That really was a, a conviction for me to see that, to hear about that. Um, and also, I, if you're going to do ditch dairy and then also eat more vegetables, you cannot go wrong with eating more vegetables. They've got fiber, they've got antioxidants, they've got vitamins and minerals that you can't get anywhere else. I mean, vegetables are key. They're really important. And we have access to so many different vegetables. So try to eat like one raw vegetable with your meal and one cooked vegetable with your meal. And don't worry about amounts. You can just, you know, eat cups of vegetables and that's fine. Now fruits on the other hand are naturally sweet. They're good for you. They offer you a lot of fiber and, and antioxidants and nutrients. But the calories in fruit, I wouldn't eat cups and cups of fruit. Okay. so but they're still necessary. Um, eat a lot of whole grains and a lot of beans. If you can eat more beans, wow, those, those beans will help to sustain you. They'll give you good fiber, good protein. It's amazing. Beans are really good for you. And we've got beans in here, the edamame. 
those are a bean. We've got corn in here. Corn is a grain. It's got good carb carbohydrate and good um, fiber in here. Um, and then we've got stuff for color. We've got stuff for flavor. And this is not a very expensive uh, salad to make. And you can see, I don't know how my husband and I are going to eat this this week. So you better come on over and help us <laughs> eat this up. So sorry, I asked for questions and I started talking a lot. So anybody have, have any questions? I do. I have a question. Um, yes. My son is having a lot of health issues that are diet related. Um, he's been working with a, a nutritional doctor. He's not vegan and neither is the doctor, but he has given up a lot of dairy products and meat products and eating more fruits and vegetables. He kind of has a form of leaky gut. And he was, he was here for a week visiting and he says he does not eat corn because he learned that all corn is all GMO. Oh, what do you, I see. What do you think about that? Because I still eat corn. I love corn. But yeah. he won't eat it because he says you're not going to find any natural growing corn anywhere anymore. Okay. Well, my husband's dying to say something. Well, go ahead. Yeah. No, after you. Yeah. Well, so your question is regarding the GMO or regarding the corn or both? The corn itself is, can you find naturally growing corn that is not GMO? Yes. Yeah, definitely. You would have to probably go to Whole Foods. Uh, okay, go ahead. My husband wants to, I'm dying to say something. <laughs> um, I've, I've done some research on that and um, there's pretty much unanimity that the bulk of the GMO corn that is raised is fed to cattle and that the bulk of the corn that is for human consumption is non-GMO. Okay, that sounds good. Because I don't want to get the Okay, cookies, the timer went and the cookies are out of the oven. Um, they're just like little, little nuggets, but uh, they're a little bit brown in the edges. They look really good. Um, if you like flat cookies, you could always just flatten them out before you bake them. But yeah, these are ready to go. Come over and have some. <laughs> what, is, yeah. what is the screen you're using there on your pan? Well, that is a, uh, let me get another one out. It's called Silcat. It's a silicon pad mat. You can it's, get them at Costco. Yeah, you can get these at Costco or Amazon. These are amazing um, for baking cookies, but even veggie burgers. So does that, I take it that eliminates by doing that, you don't have to use any oil on the pan itself when you bake things. Correct, yeah. And sometimes even with parchment paper, which you don't have to use oil either, the veggie burgers will stick. But with these, it comes right off. It's amazing. You don't have to use any oil and um they're easy to clean sometimes i don't even clean them because they come off so clean um yeah these are essential if you're really cutting back on the oil even like the pam spray you know you don't have to spray it with any pam spray or whatever non-stick spray you just use one of these yeah these what great. do you call it what do you call it again it's a, a silicon mat Sil Silic hat. silicon oh, mat okay yeah. Uh, Sally has a question. She says, uh -huh. if you don't mind divulging, what health issues encourage you to go plant-based? What health issues? Um, well, I wasn't really suffering from any health issues, but I, um, I, know, I know with digestion, that's a big thing about going plant-based. And we were vegetarian before going plant-based and we would have cheese on, I would eat cheese on my pasta. My husband wouldn't eat the cheese, but I would eat cheese on my pasta. And I remember having digestive issues every time after I ate my pasta dinner. And I thought, oh, it's the bell pepper. Oh, I put too much garlic in there. I never thought it was the cheese. So then I went plant-based and we started eating pasta dinners again, but no cheese on top. Um, and I wasn't having the digestive issues that I had. I was like, wow, you know, that's amazing. So just little things like that really make a difference. I hear people say that it helps to 
make their skin clearer, like, like um, the acne goes away. Um, because with eating more fruits and vegetables, you're eating an anti-inflammatory diet if you're avoiding sugar and processed foods too. That's part of it. Remember, whole foods plant-based is not vegan, really. It's more eating foods in their natural whole state as possible. Because um, vegans, boy, if you want to just eat vegan, you can eat Oreos and chips and soda and all that. We don't advocate that. We advocate the whole food and avoiding all the processed oils and sugars um, as much as possible. And that's, that will give you the anti-inflammatory diet that you need for, for acne or for other, um, just even recovering from a cold or recovering from an infection or something. If you avoid those processed foods, the sugars, the oils, and the highly processed foods, you will recover a lot faster. Kathleen, so, Kathleen has a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see if I'm on. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you do if a recipe calls for oil? What's the replacement if a recipe is asking for oil? Oh, well, it depends what the recipe is. If it's a, like a cookie or um, a baked good like that, you can use applesauce. Um, instead, you can use, um, some people even use like... Um, tahini or peanut butter. Um, the, let's see, in a, in a salad dressing, if, you're, if you want to avoid oil. Um, oh, there's so many different things you can do. You can use like chia seeds, blend that up. Um, that makes it have that viscous kind of uh, texture to it. Um, a lot of times when I see recipes for salad dressing that have oil, I just leave the oil out and I increase the um, lemon juice or um, in that way. Um, and you can saute without oil. You just can just use water. Just use water. Yeah, just use water. Yeah, it's it works great. Yeah. Okay. Is somebody asking a question? No. Okay. Yeah, so um, oh, I also want to encourage you, I, I've talked about ditching the dairy, eating more vegetables, and eating more beans. Try to eat beans every day, you know? And don't worry about them being canned or whatever. Um, just eat some beans. Beans every day is better than no beans at all. Because when you have a high fiber diet, that does so much for you, does so much for your immune system, for your digestion, for your getting rid of cholesterol. I mean, there are so many benefits in a high fiber diet. And get your fiber from the whole food. Don't take fiber su supplements. Get it from the whole food. And you'll feel full. But the reason why I advocate beans is because it has a lot of fiber, it makes you feel full, and it also lasts you for hours. Okay, much better than eating, um, you know, a lot of greens or something like that, you know. So that's basically what I have to say and what I want to encourage you folks in your journey. And I heard my husband say, you know, everybody's on at a different place in their plant-based journey, and that's perfectly fine. But as long as we continue to learn and we continue to practice what we learn and we share it with others, you know, that's, that's really important. Kathleen has another question. Um, I've been uh, wanting to roast chickpeas, and a lot of the recipes I see with, for roasted chickpeas, they say to put them, you know, put them in oil and then salt them. Can I just put the chickpeas, you know, on the um, the thing or the whatever? The... Yes, on that sill pad, on that silicon mat. Yeah. Yes, and then but just salt them from there, or or what would you recommend? Well, so one thing I learned. learned Yes, for roasting chickpeas, if you save some of that water from the chickpea, don't rinse and drain them because that aquafaba, the water that comes with the canned chickpeas, or if you cook chickpeas in an instant pot or a pressure cooker, um, that water helps keep the seasonings coated onto the chickpea. So you don't need to use the oil. You can just use a little bit of that aquafaba that comes in the can of the chickpeas. 
and that helps to um, keep the seasonings on and helps to roast it. Works really great. And you can use that aquafaba if you want to, if you're roasting vegetables too, that works really well. Uh, wanna, Stephen and, and Rachel have a question. What are your thoughts on alkaline water? Alkaline water? Um, well, um, I'm trying to think how to say it nicely. Uh, well, don't waste your money buying alkaline water. You, um, if you eat a plant-based diet, you are getting a lot of alkaline foods. Um, meat and dairy are very acid foods, and they will not, they don't help you at all with that. And people are buying alkaline water because they want to keep eating their meat and their dairy. And so they need that alkaline. But if you avoid meat and dairy, any animal products, you're getting rid of a lot of acid and you will have a really high alkaline uh, diet. So I really encourage you to eat more fruits and vegetables. If you're not ready to get rid of dairy or meat, just eat tons of fruits and vegetables. Um, that will help to, um, and I think it's kind of like a moneymaker, almost like a fad, like a, um, it, it's not, you don't need to buy alkaline water or make your own alkaline water. And one, one doctor actually said that it's, it, it, it's like a processed food uh, or like a, a vitamin, you know, where they extract the vitamins out of things or they manufacture it themselves and they put it in a little pill. That's kind of like the alkaline. And D. T. Colin Campbell has said something that really means a lot to me. He says, a plant-based diet is like an orchestra playing a sym symphony. You need all the elements in the, in the orchestra to make that beautiful sound. And same with plants. You need all the elements that come from that whole plant to to give you the maximum benefit. If you start extracting things and processing things, you know, there's a reason God made an apple, not apple juice. He made an apple. So let's eat that apple because it works together like an orchestra and creates this beautiful symphony in our body. So that's why, you know, we really advocate whole foods rather than processed foods. And that really, I don't know, That's, that just really strikes me as something really beautiful and very, um, uh, I don't know, very can, encouraging. Can I say, can I say something? Can sure. anyone hear me? Oh, yay. Okay, I want to tell you that um, I am in Northern California, actually in Palo Alto. I'm so thankful that you have sent me the notices. Today, my daughter, who's down in Hermosa Beach, she wasn't able to come on, but Everything has been so wonderful. I just want to um, thank you for all the information, first in the lecture from Pastor Jensen, and even the answer about the corn. I, with the COVID, I have a garden up here every day, and everything that he was saying about the fresh air and all of the new start stuff, and now all the information. And I am so blessed on this Sabbath afternoon, and I just thank you, and I just want to, um, whenever you do this again, I'm going to be sharing not only with my daughter your information and your recipes, which I downloaded, but also um, with other people up here from the Palo Alto Church, and such. it was a wonderful program, and I, I don't want to talk too much, but thank you again, both of you, for what you've Shared. You're welcome. Yes, definitely. It's a blessing to share and encourage you and encourage all of you on the path of health and um, blessings. Here's what we want to do in terms of going forward. We want to thank the Jensen's for being with us today. We are going yes. to hold three more uh, health uh, and cooking demonstrations this year. They're going to be the fourth Saturday of each month at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. 
The next one will be August 22nd at 3 p.m. Pacific time in the afternoon. I need to clarify that our motive and our intention is to sell you nothing. We seek, um, to, we are not seeking any gain from doing this. Our motive is the promotion and the facilitation of health and a whole plant-based diet. That's our motivation in doing this. Um, we do have a website. It's called um, gethealthy.la, uh, gethealthy.a. We'll have the recording of today on the website. We'll have the recipes on the website. We'll have a place, there's a place on the website to register for the next uh, cooking, cooking and uh, health lecture, which is uh, August 22. The, the next uh, presentation will be September uh, 26, and then, uh, and then October 24. Those dates will be on the website as well. We are going to be, we have arrangements to have some physicians uh, doing health uh, lectures as well, and I think John Jensen can speak to that going forward. Thank you, yes, actually, I'm just in the process of uh, uploading the picture of our next speaker. Let me see if I can get this uh, squared away here. Um, his name is Dr. John Tanner. He is a PhD scientist, engineer. And uh, now if you, uh, you can download that here. You can download uh, Dr. Tanner's picture, um, and I'm going to just do a little dance here with you. <clears throat> uh, you can uh, download the picture of Dr. John Tanner. Uh, he's got an amazing lecture and story to tell. It's called, I Almost Died Needlessly. Wow. How about you? And he was an athlete. He was a runner. He thought he was eating a good diet. He was eating, he wasn't eating the completely standard American diet, but he was eating uh, typical American food. Um, and uh, while he was out running one day, he had a heart attack that dropped him one, two, boom, down to the face plant in the, in the road. And I'm not gonna tell the rest of the story because I want you to come and hear it. Uh, so we will have Dr. John Tanner uh, speaking by Zoom on Saturday afternoon. August 22, and then we will follow him up with another uh, person who will give an excellent cooking demonstration. It's most likely going to be Anna Evans, but we're still finalizing the, the, the arrangements with, with her or with another person. And uh, we're so happy that you came. If you didn't register on the gethealthy.la website, please do so because then we will add your name to an email distribution list so that you'll know all of our upcoming events. And uh, as Pastor Greg Schaller has said, the only reason we're doing this is because we want you to live long and enjoy your grandchildren and enjoy your great-grandchildren. And we want you to live until you're 125 with no lifestyle diseases. We want you to just be going strong and making this world a better place. And then if you're tired of living at 125 because you don't have any friends that are that old, then we hope you go to sleep one night and you just don't wake up the next day. So, and that's what can happen if you adopt a plant-based whole food diet and make lifestyle changes that we spoke about today with the new start. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, God bless you. And it's really been fun. We'll see you again soon. We will post the, as Pastor Greg said, we will post the recording. It'll be a YouTube link of today's meeting on the website, gethealthy.la. We'll post the recipes up, and we'll post the, the new information about the upcoming other classes. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, John, for leading out today. We're getting ready to leave now. The, someone has asked, what is the website? Again, it's gethealthy.la. Get healthy dot la it's in the chat box area several times there where you can see it and again our next session will be in august the fourth saturday 
at three o'clock. That'll be August 22 at three o'clock in the afternoon. Thank you, Jensen. It's been wonderful. Thank you for everyone who's been here. You can invite your friends to come to it and we'll see you August 22. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.